pairs of ears and Miles and Brad today. What? <laughs> Every Three people. Yeah. First time. Everybody wanted to be here today because it's a fun day. Okay. What we're talking about, but it's this day in Disney for October 29th. Halloween's almost here. And so starting off, we're heading not too far away to 1993. Well, I guess that's kind of far for you, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Unthinkable. Tim Burton's animated The Nightmare Before Christmas debuts in U.S. theaters. So this is a stop motion animated musical dark fantasy film directed by Henry Selick. Um, that would be his first film, and produced and conceived by Tim, Tim Burton. Yes. Yeah. It's yeah. awesome. This movie is really important to me because I was like working in a music store, I had a driver's license, and this film came out, and it was the first like movie that I went to completely alone. Like, no family, no friends, paid for the ticket, and not only did I go once, I went back like the next week to see it again, to, oh, twice. I mean, it was awesome. It really blew my mind. It was I just amazing. Loved it. For the time period, it was phenomenal. I remember seeing this in the theaters too. It was just like, what? <laughs> How are they doing all this? This is so cool. <laughs> and really, they're just, just loved it. And really, they're just moving little things mm -hmm. all around. Click, click, click. Yeah, it's so cool how they did it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I also remember actually eating Chinese food in the theater when I saw this movie. Wow. <laughs> Back in the day. Yes. <laughs> but um, The Nightmare Before Christmas actually originated as a poem by Tim Burton in 1982 when he was working as an animator at the Walt Disney, um, at Walt Disney Productions, or at Walt Disney Studios. It was voiced by uh, Danny Elfman. Also, he scored the music for it. Then uh, Chris uh, Saradin, Catherine O'Hara, William Hickey, and Paul Rubens. Yes. Peewee. Nice, nice cast there. Exactly. <laughs> Tim Burton was largely fascinated by holidays as a child. Um, and anytime, he said, at any time, it was Christmas or Halloween, it was great. It gave you some sort of texture all of a sudden that wasn't there before. So he is a super big fan of the holidays. I like that. And yes. it's just so interesting because it was both Halloween and Christmas. And this film, I mean, is debated all the time. Is it a Christmas movie? Is it a Halloween movie? Well, I think it's interesting <laughs> that it was released so late in the month to yeah. Halloween. Yeah. I mean, that if it was a Halloween movie, it would have been released in early October. Right. So the fact that it was released so late kind of blends itself to being a Christmas, Christmas movie. I mean, maybe, maybe a little nod to Halloween. St. Patrick's Day movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's interesting. Is there? Yeah. No, but... <laughs> There's yeah, in your preparation, you had shared with me about mm -hmm. an intended sequel. Yes, there was an intended sequel, but actually Tim Burton didn't want to do it. He didn't want a sequel to this film. Okay. I really respect that. Um, I think it would have weakened, um, cheapened yeah. the, the film. Yeah. It's it has like a standalone, like, it does. Like, yeah. Peanuts, um, The Great Pumpkin. Right. You know, it's right. all alone. It's and perfect. so at that time, he was already, he was doing a sequel for Batman Returns because at this time, the reason he's not the director for this film and Henry Selick is, is because um, Tim Burton has signed contracts working on Batman. He already, they did Batman and now it's, he's with Batman Returns, so he can't technically direct this film. So it's his film though. It's his thing, his concept. It was based on a poem actually inspired from Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, the, the TV special, uh, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, and um, A Visit from St. Nicholas, that book. Yeah. So um, he created concept art and storyboards and everything. This was back when he wrote the poem in 1982. Um, and he actually showed it to Henry Selick, his friend there, because he was a Disney animator too. And he was super impressed, just loved it, and very supportive friend. So Burton was fired in 1984. <laughs> 
So <laughs> you're like, well, how did this movie get made then? <laughs> but he went on to su successfully direct Beetlejuice and then Batman, as I mentioned. Um, so he and Selleck were so committed to um, to produce the film, and they found out that Disney still had the rights to it in 1990, mm -hmm. and so then they went back to Disney, and they're okay. like, let's do this. Interesting. Right. So Tim Burton came back to Disney through his own recording. Yeah, his wow. own thing he made, how they had the rights to. And how many films that we enjoyed afterwards? I mean, right. Alice in Wonderland, like many things that he's touched. Coraline. Coraline. Mm -hmm. I mean, just, wow. The Corpse Bride. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so Burton's success uh, was, you know, Disney was interested in him with that success that he had with these two films. Sure. So, of course, Katzenberg in particular wanted to work with him. Burton also decided to make the film a musical, and that's where Danny Elfman came in. And he actually helped with the music and with the character development. He really, really liked Jack Skellington. He said it was one of the easiest jobs he's ever had. Um, he said, I had a lot in common with Jack Skellington. So he really identified. And the music's so great, too. And it's just... It's so awesome. So Henry Selleck, as the director, said it was his job to make it... Um, look like a Tim Burton film. Uh, Tim Burton couldn't be there all the time. So he was just realizing uh, Tim Burton's dream. And he actually said that, um, you know, it was like an egg that he, that <laughs> Tim Burton laid this egg and he was just like, you know, sitting on it <laughs> and all until the egg hatched. So, um, I thought that was kind of cute, <laughs> but it was it was just an awesome film, and I know you guys really loved it too, right? Yeah, I absolutely love it. Yeah. yeah. What do you one? think your favorite part is? What's this? What's this? <laughs> it is. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, there is a sweet irony in all of those lines. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah, such conflict. Yeah. Yeah. I. I think the stop animation is just so, I think at the time that was just so interesting that they did that. Um, and we weren't really, I know when we were younger, it, I don't know, maybe, I can't speak for you Brad, but for me, I just was like, how oh, are they making this so amazing? It's oh, a yeah. piece of no, art. No, it was a mystery at the time. Mm -hmm, for sure. Um, so in regards to that, they actually constructed 227 puppets for this film. Um, Jack Skellington alone had 400 different heads, which, does that make sense? Because oh, his yeah. head, ch I mean, his expressions change the most. Indeed. He's so incredibly expressive and emotional. And yeah, I've seen video and pictures of yeah. all the heads. It's very interesting. Very interesting. Um, so then I also found out about Sally. She actually, you know, she has that long red hair that would be hard to mess up. They didn't want to change the hair at all, so they used a face mask for her. And they changed out the face mask um, to get her different expressions. I am the clown with the tearaway face. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Flash and gone without a dress. Oh boy. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, so they had, I uh, did all sorts of different masks for her and she had 10 types of faces, each made with a series of um, different expressions like eyes open and closed, kind of things like that and various facial expressions and synchronized mouth movements so that was cool and then james and the giant peach um there's a scene in there with uh jack yeah well that's actually that's hit that's the jack that they use from nightmare before Christmas. yeah at least his head they used right and when is this what scene in the pirate scene when he's like a pirate. Oh, yes. Yes. There's the pirate captain. <laughs> yeah. Fact, I just watched that a few days ago. I was like, oh, oh yeah. yeah, he's in this Totally. One. Totally. Another good Halloween time mm -hmm. film. Yeah. So, was this film liked when it came out? It was considered a sleeper... What do you... It's a cult classic. Yeah, well, it's... at the time, it actually I think the soundtrack moved it forward pretty hard. Yeah. At the time. Well, yeah. They they felt that it did better than they expected. They expected. Mm -hmm. um, it was actually the least expensive film 
that they had made. Interesting. So that's yeah. kind of interesting too. Yeah. It's just a lot of hard work yeah. doing the stop animation. Yeah, I know I worked so, in a music store at the time and we sold a lot of those soundtracks. I so bet. I think I'm kind of yeah. leaning towards that. Yeah. The music, it was nominated for an Academy Award Best Visual Effects and then a Hugh Award Best Dramatic uh, Presentation. It won a Saturn Award for Best Fantasy Film, and then um, Danny Elfman won Best Music, and Selleck and the animators were all nominated for their work as well. It was nominated for a Golden Globe for Best Original Score. So, to eat to now, it's number one on Rotten Tomatoes, <laughs> of course, <laughs> if you count that as a, sort of, a lot of people do. And then it's top 25 for Best Christmas movies. Interesting, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. <laughs> so it's a nod to the Christmas side of it being a Christmas movie, but <laughs> it's up to you, yeah. honestly. You can watch it year round. <laughs> so Valentine's Day, St. Patrick's Day, it, Thanksgiving. There's a love element for sure. <laughs> well, in the beginning, all those tree doors lead to different holidays, so kind of all the holidays are represented. Represented. Yeah. That's true. So there is, isn't there a St. Patrick's Day door? I believe there is. Yeah, there is. it is in there. <laughs> That's hilarious. Anyway, so thank you guys for hanging out yeah. and talking about Nightmare Before Christmas. Of course, wouldn't we miss it. Film. So special. Happy Halloween, everyone. Yeah. Happy Halloween. <laughs> we'll see you.